happened. <laughs> the bus crashed. We're okay, though, just shaken up. I don't remember being in any crash. Well, here we are on set of Little Hope, part of the Dark Pictures anthology. Tell me about the characters you play in the game. Yeah, it's very exciting. I play Andrew, who is a student on this trip to the town of Little Hope. You know this place? No. I mean, I don't think so. I also play Anthony and I play Abraham, all existing at different time periods in different places. Is it tough to balance at all and to kind of jump back between these characters as you go through it? A little bit. I've had a, I've had a lot of help along the way and we've been able to for the most part separate the three different guys we have an amazing accent coach on set at all times so she keeps me in check and puts me on the right part of the map when i stray too far only the devil could create a demon who so resembles me we do look alike which i agree is pretty damn weird how tough is it for you to separate that and, and balance it all yeah it's interesting andrew being the character that i embody for most of the time was a little bit easier for me. I related to him naturally. He's this socially awkward, repressed student, and I certainly, as a student, was pretty socially awkward and repressed, so I could relate to him a great deal. You seem uncomfortable around kids your own age. This trip is actually my first time away from home. Oh, we picked a real beauty. <laughs> yeah, well, if I ever make it back, I'll sure have something to talk about. The other character, Anthony, is slightly more immature, comes from a big family. I can also relate to that. And dealing with the family dynamic and playing that sibling friction was also something that I think a lot of people can relate to. And that was fun, uh, another sort of element of the challenge which I really enjoyed. And then there's Abraham, um, the third character that I'm responsible for. We have to stop this. The only madness is right here in this court. And the nice thing that exists in all three of them is this motivation to do good, to do right. And I think all three characters I really had admiration for. They seem to be like morally adept and it's important to respect, I think, the characters that you play or at least identify something within them that you respect. And I respected all three of the guys that I played. I know what must be done here. And they're all so very different, and, and even uh, the level of the accents uh, change between them. Is that something to, that's challenging to navigate? Yeah, that's been really fun for me. It's been, when playing Andrew, I've been doing a relatively neutral American accent, but we sort of base most of the action in New England. So it does lean towards the East Coast, and it doesn't take on too strong of a characterization in, in either direction. The vocal work for Anthony is similar to that, but because Anthony lives within the 1970s, there's been a little bit of tweaking to the accent in order to accommodate the times. And then Abraham's an entirely different accent. It's been a bit of guesswork as far as constructing that accent because there's no recordings of what people sounded like at that time. But I suppose the closest thing to it, we imagine, is a kind of Northern English accent. And my dad's from Yorkshire, so I've basically been ripping off what my dad sounded like when he was younger. She talked in this really weird accent. Was that even American? And also with the, the process itself as a, a huge like a learning curve, like you say, with the performance capture. What's mm. the process been like for you? Have you, have you been able to adapt? Do you feel at home now wearing the helmet? And Yeah, it's funny. I mean, it presents a whole Is host of challenges. It... Uh, it can get a little uncomfortable. Okay. You, uh, after a while, you can get a little, it can get a little uncomfortable. You never forget the first time you go for a Wii wearing that, wearing that headset, yeah. thinking, am I on some sort of screen somewhere in a studio right now? Can people see me? Wing. But you soon get used to the headset and the pack that you're wearing. And I think the best thing you can do is try and remove that from the equation entirely and just make it about looking at the person opposite you. Some of the more physical stuff is challenging because if you do want to move around and you do want to add a physical performance to whatever facial, emotional things that are being captured, you have to be careful that the sound isn't being compromised because of your movements. But you know, in lots of ways, it's been quite freeing, too. We move at a great pace. There's little repetition over the same thing. There's lots of variation, but little repetition, really. And we have an opportunity to move freely about the space, pretty much. We're not confined to marks, and we don't have to relight every single moment. It's go, go, go. It's been 100 miles per hour, and I've loved the intensity of it. It's been great. But we're uh, looking for our bus driver. What? Have you seen him? <laughs> yeah, that's funny. 
What's up with the fog outside? It's, uh, it's pretty weird. Sure is a thick one tonight. Actually, it's so thick, it's stopping us from leaving. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know that feeling. You're, uh, trapped here too, then? Thank God. It's a whole different pace, I feel, than what you normally when you're setting up a scene and you're, you, know, you shoot front to back, and then now it's kind of like you're just jumping in and you're just like stop, start, stop, start. It must be a whole, it must be kind of refreshing in a way. A hundred percent, yeah. You can start in the morning and by lunch you've died and come back to life four or five times, whereas on a film set you would have had to shoot for several weeks to get that material, so you do blast through a, a, a ton of content. Run! <clears throat> get the hell out of there! Yeah, it's gonna be really cool to see yourself in a video game. It's gonna be an incredible experience too. And then now your friends and family members can like play you in a game. That must be a, a whole weird feeling. Yeah, that is really weird. It's strange enough seeing my face on screen in anything, but you're really mad and exciting, I guess, to think about being in a video game. I guess that's like a little kid's dream in lots of ways, so I feel very lucky. It's incredible. Your friends are gonna call you, but like, I, I killed you. Yeah, I killed you three times. They're like, good, good to speak to you too, bud. Uh, yeah, <laughs> thanks. Thanks for the call. Would you confront your fears or would you run away? I want to say confront my fears. After this experience, I would confront my fears. Maybe previously I would have run away. What kind of place is this? It's one of those things where what you think you'll do is different than what you probably actually do. In the moment, yeah, 100%. Oh, I would confront my fears and then you're, and then you're gone. <laughs> gone, yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably. And lastly, uh, would you explore on your own or, or in a group? In a group, I'd have to. One of the best things about this experience has just been the camaraderie that's developed amongst the cast and over a short period of time shooting at this intensity. It's bonded us together really quickly and I've loved being part of the team. A group of us in one room on this crazy journey together. So it's all about exploring as a team. I'm just gonna say it. This is exactly what goes down in horror movies. Well, plus than anything in the horror genre, we know what happens when you go off on your own, right? 100%, don't do it. And they still do it. And they still do it. Go yeah. Go check out that room over yeah. there. No, don't go check out that room. No. Nope. Don't go or check out. Or bring someone with you. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. There you go. All right, Will. Tana, thanks. Thanks a lot. A lot. Appreciate, Appreciate that. It. Thank you. Cheers.